And here, sometimes the boundaries are not that clear. It's a human risk where the humans are not aware to the guidelines and how things should be followed. What is the impact of them asking an external AI model uh, with private uh, information of the company? And sometimes they're even not aware that they are doing so. Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. My guest is Gafnit Amiga. Gafnit leads the security research group of Cisco Panoptica, focused on exploring cloud service, Kubernetes, software supply chain, and artificial intelligence to identify potential security risks. She joined Cisco when that company acquired Lightspin in the past year. She's the former vice president of security research at Lightspin. Gafnit has 10 years of experience in application security and cloud security research, and she's discovered multiple vulnerabilities within AWS, Azure, and Kubernetes. Uh, Previously, Gafnit was a lead product security engineer at Salesforce, focused on that company's core platform. And prior to that, she was a security researcher at General Electric Digital. Gafnit, welcome to Technovation. It's great to speak with you today. Great to be here, Peter. Thank you. That's a pleasure. Well, Gaffney, uh, maybe we begin with your role as a cloud security research leader. Can you describe what that entails? Yes, of course. So I guess that you already know that cloud is extremely popular today. And I believe that maybe every company uh, uses the cloud in some sense. Some of them maybe are fully deployed in the cloud. Maybe some of them are partially and working in a hybrid mode. But at the end, cloud is being used everywhere. So this is what makes it a very interesting target for attackers as well. And this is why they are examining it and trying to find uh, issues and vulnerabilities. And what is unique also about it is the fact that they can actually create their own instance and account in AWS, Azure, or GCP, any cloud environment, and explore it and, and see what might get wrong in, in other target environments. And this is what makes it very unique. So what the group, uh, the research group is doing as part of Panoptica, which is a Synap product, is to always be aware to the different cloud risks, which means that you need to know what are the different cloud services, how they are integrate with each other, and what are the potential misconfigurations that customer can do and to detect them to come up with new techniques and ideas and everything should be part of the product. Very interesting. It's as you point out, as technology progresses, new issues uh, become uh, online, come online and need to be rectified as well. And among those areas where new challenges emerge is with artificial intelligence. I mentioned in the introduction that that's an area uh, where you have also special depth. I wonder if you could take a moment to uh, call out some of the prominent challenges associated with artificial intelligence and, and its advances. Yeah, well, so actually my view on the, on the AI and its security risks is that I, th- I think that all the conventional uh, risks will apply there as well. The risks that you have of in, in any application and uh, as part of the pipeline and, and so on. But what, what is more challenging in, in AI and the risks is the fact that it can be used everywhere and by everyone. So you have, uh, and in, in the company, Anyone can use it. And and because it's so popular and there is a big hype around it, it's easy to use and accessible to everyone. You find that engineers, products, marketing, everyone actually uses it and try to to see how they can ease their work and uh, come up with with new innovations. And here sometimes the boundaries are not that clear. And the risk is not a, a traditional risk where it's part of the, of the uh, development process. It's a human risk where the humans are not aware to the guidelines and how things should be followed. What is the impact of them uh, pasting or asking an AI model, an external AI model uh, with private uh, information of the company? And sometimes they're even not aware that they are doing so. So the boundaries here are not that strict. And the fact that it's hard to to control it and detect it, this is what makes it a pretty unique, I would say, security risk in in that sense. So this is a very common risk today in in AI. And also you have the the, the risks from deployment and customer face uh, risks that were the prompt injection attacks, where as a company, you offer smart chatbots that use AI and you want to to make a, a valuable product for your customers and to let them uh, ease the process. When you develop such a technology that uses AI, you use at some points your own data or the customer data and things there might not be uh, clear in terms of 
will the data be leaked or the AI will expose some of the secrets that were used for training. So um, these parts are also very popular today in security risks in, in AI. Fascinating. Thank you for that overview. I wanted to, uh, as as broader context setting to the, the role that you have and the work that you and your team do, mm-hmm. take a moment, if you would, to describe your research, how you conduct it, and how it's leveraged more broadly across Cisco. Well, so the, the method that we believe to conduct the research is always to put ourselves in the perspective and mind of the person that is going to use this technology. So let's say that now I want to research a a specific cloud service. So first I will read about this cloud service, its documentation, how to use it. And let's say that now a developer, a DevSecOps or DevOps want to use this service, probably they will do the same. They will uh, read some get started manual and follow the steps. I will do the same. I will follow the steps and uh, create uh, this uh, service, play with it, update, delete. But along the way, I will also think, well, while I'm doing this process, what can get wrong? What probably or maybe someone can by mistake or unknowingly not checking some box that will enforce security or choosing an insecure values for a specific configuration, or maybe a location where there is a, a good potential to put sensitive data. So this is, this is the, the difference uh, in mindset while you're doing it, but while you are copying the same actions, you can find the, the locations where someone might get wrong. And I like that, that puts, in essence, putting yourself in the mind, as you said, or to walk in the shoes of the, the users, either existing or eventual. To what extent does that involve actual engagement with those users, uh, Gafneet? Uh, actual engagement with users. So wh- were you, you're talking about the company, uh, like internal uh, users? Yeah. So the extent to which your research and, and, and mm-hmm. you are kind of walking a, 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 a distance with, in the shoes of the people mm-hmm. who might potentially have issues, to what extent are you engaging, whether they're colleagues of yours or customers of the company, depending upon what the research is intended to benefit? Oh, so we're not we're not engaging that much with with the the end users. We are doing it uh, by reading uh, the, the documentation and blogs that sometimes uh, users are, are writing and trying to to see their perspective. But uh, the the engagement with with users is usually when a customer is uh, reaching out to ask about something or they are seeing a, they, they see a security risk and they want to ask about it as well. Uh, so this is the kind of user interaction that we get. But we also see here internally sometimes that questions are being raised from the day to day because we are also using cloud as part of uh, of our, our uh, development. So this is the, the experience that we have. Makes and sense. There, there is also, I think, a unique thing uh, about uh, this type of research because this is a research that we're doing to constantly enrich and uh, and make sure that we are up to date with our security value in the product. But the, the research group here at, at Cisco is uh, in a unique role because we are not only doing this security detection part, we have two additional parts. One part is to be with product and engineering. So you can see security researcher sits with product, understand what they want to achieve, what is the value that they want to get to a customer. And then with them, translate it into a technical definition. Sometimes there is a, a, a pre-required research where a researcher will try to see what, what is the right method to achieve this information from the cloud and how to correlate it correctly. Only then we're moving it to uh, the development phase. And in the development phase, you can see the developers are, are also engaged with research to make sure that the engineering process will export the right value that we want to get. So it's, it's, a, it's a circle between product engineering uh, and research. And another phase is the uh, innovation. So the, the team also has a dedicated projects for innovation where we try to think on non-conventional ways to improve the product. For example, we have uh, in our uh, CWP solution, we search for CVEs on the workloads. How can we better prioritize it? So these are types of innovation projects that we also do in the research group. And talk about the backgrounds of people on your teams. I, I know from our past conversations, you've talked about how diverse they are. 
Uh, it's not as though they have a, a single set of experiences or a single area in which they focus on from an education perspective. Talk a bit about them, if you would. Yeah, so they are actually very they they very diverse. The, their their background, they are one. Of, some of them are coming from a military a background where they served at eight eight two hundred. So they they came with a came with a little experience in security, not necessarily in cloud security. Some of them are fresh graduates, no security uh, knowledge at all, uh, and some of them are coming from a development experience. But they always had a curiosity for the security domain and they uh, played with it at, at home and learned by, by themselves. So they're very different, but they're always interested to know how things work, how things are being done behind the scenes, how things are integrated with each other, communicating with each other. And this is what makes them to, to dig deeper and to read more until they understand what exposes, in most of the cases, the, the security issues as well. So even though they are different, they are from different backgrounds, they are same uh, wills. That's very interesting. I, I like that, the, the curiosity being uh, part of the essential ingredient that's common, even uh, given the diversity of, of backgrounds uh, and experiences that they have. Um, as you reflect on uh, some of the latest research that you and the team are, are uh, doing right now, what are some areas that you're particularly intrigued or excited about? Well, so I'm, of course, I'm interested in uh, uh, the Gen AI uh, security research and specifically the, the combination between the two, the combination between AI and security for both ways, how you can use AI to improve your security product or security in general, and the other way where how you can use security to protect AI. So both directions are very interesting to me. And uh, we have projects in both of them and we uh, explore for new techniques. Uh, I, I would say that the other direction where you need to use security to protect AI solutions is more challenging because there, the, there is no, the zone is not defined yet, even not for security, even generally just as a, as a Gen AI a development stack, how to use things, compliance, regulations, things are not there yet. So it's it's very hard to come up with the, the security layer on top of, on top of it. Uh, but this is what makes it interesting, in my opinion. In, in light of some of these changes, I wonder what uh, top line recommendations you would have for chief information officers and chief information security officers uh, to ensure that they are well equipped to withstand some of the challenges uh, associated with what you've just described? So my first uh, recommendation, and this is not only for AI, it's generally for security, is you need to have observability and a good observability. If it's for cloud or not only cloud, what is being deployed, where, does it make sense? And especially with the, with the hype around AI where everyone uses things, as we said previously, you need to have their observability. You need to know who uses a, a what and what are the AI models that they're using and how, what is the data that is being transferred. And once you have this observability, you can start to control it because it's very hard to control on something that is unknown. And even by observability as itself, you can you can see what are the, the outliners, these things that doesn't make sense even just by de being used or deployed. And after you have this observability phase, you can you can add on top of it guardrails and security controls, and they, they can be different. In, in some areas in the company, you can enforce one policy, in other areas, a different policy. But it all starts with you being aware to what's being used and where. The second recommendation will be to drive for security excellence also from the developer and to educate for security because everything moves to the developer area and every, everything is about shift, shifting left. So, And I can say from my experience that it's very hard for a security engineer to explain the developer why this type of bug is a release blocker and it's so urgent because it's it's a, it's very hard to to explain the impact in some cases, and when when the developer is aware to why this code is is vulnerable and what is the impact of this type of vulnerability, 
they by themselves will not create uh, such vulnerable code. They will try to improve their code quality in terms of security. And I can say that when I looked at companies that they are secure, security aware, the developers are security aware, you can see that their, their baseline is, is, uh, is, is easier from start. Of course, all the, even those companies, they need security tooling and security processes and to make sure that along the development pipeline, everything is secure. But when you start with a mindset of wanting to, to, to make something secure, so you're start, starting in a better, better point, a better standing point. And I had fascinating uh, uh, recommendations. Thank you so much for noting those. I, I wanted to also ask, as somebody who's been involved in these topics for a decade, if you reflect on where your work began and how it's evolved across uh, you know, roughly 10 years, I'd be interested in some of your, your reflections and even some of the inflection points across that period. I feel that uh, as for myself, I always want to do what is hot and new in the in the industry. So I started like 10 years ago, I start, started with application and network security. And then uh, I moved to cloud. But by that, at that time, cloud was already well defined in, in terms of cloud risks. There were not that many security researchers in the cloud domain, but the cloud domain as itself was uh, defined. There were regulations and policies and control and the and compliance and so on. And then recently, I I, I moved also to to uh, research uh, AI, and this is a completely different domain. And uh, and here it's more challenging, as I said, because it's uh, uh, not defined yet even as a domain by itself. So it's uh, hard to secure it in, in some some sense. But along the way, even with the shift from application to cloud and to, to AI, I always feel that I look at things from a multiple perspective. So when I look at, at cloud, I also use my knowledge in application because I said, well, this is eventually, at least to me, this is a big application, which is broken into chunks. And here in AI as well, I always think about how this application functions where, where it's deployed. So maybe here some cloud uh, uh, knowledge can assist as well, uh, but they are different. So I feel that being to, to reach the research things that are more popular in the industry today, it's interesting. And this is uh, because you want to feel your impact on, on the re- and be relevant to the new things. And, and how how do you stay uh, current, Gafnit? Uh, there are so many different directions from which one might go. There are, of course, all kinds of innovations that are happening. I, I might might add from from good players like a Cisco, but also bad actors, as you point out, innovations that are happening in both directions. And what are some of the ways? I mean, clearly, one of the ways in which you stay current is conversation with your colleagues that yield some of the you know direction of research, as you highlighted a little bit earlier. Are there other resources that you leverage, groups that you leverage to help you uh, maintain a, a, an appropriate level of currency uh, relative to these topics and, and a cognizance of the evolution of those topics? Yes. Yeah, so um, I always search for resources online. There are, there are people that I love their research. Uh, so I follow them on, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and whenever they publish a new research, I, I read this research. I'm, I'm in some of the groups as well to get more uh, knowledge and and um, and be exposed to what's new and what's going on. Social media here has a great role. Uh, when it comes to AI, I feel that I, this is at least for me. I felt that I need to do some more academic, traditional training before getting into the the industry content. So I took some courses. Uh, and only then I, I reached to uh, reading more companies published material or, or individuals even. So, but in AI, you will see more academic papers as well. So this is the, the areas where, where I look at. As, as somebody who operates uh, and is focused on security, um, it, naturally with each innovation, uh, from a technology perspective, new vulnerabilities occur. And those vulnerabilities then lead to additional innovation to counter those. I'm speaking very mm-hmm. generally and perhaps a bit simplistically, but uh, obviously it's impossible to completely eradicate all vulnerabilities. 
But now again, with 10 years of research in this area, do you find yourself optimistic that the challenges ahead will be met with innovation to counter counter those challenges in meaningful ways? I, I think it's an endless game, I would say. I look at it as a game, <laughs> uh, like like a chess game that each time like you need to do a move. I personally think that it's, it will never stop because... You, you can see that you always challenge the attacker and the attacker finds a way to bypass your challenge and then you need to think on, on a better way to challenge the attacker. So, and, and that's the beauty in it. And this is why I'm so attracted to this domain because it feels like you always need to, to improve yourself uh, and your mindset because, because you want always to be better than the other side and to, to challenge them. So uh, it, this is my opinion. I think it, it's, uh, of course, you can see a slowdown if, if let's say, some t- in the past to break things took, like th- after the moment they released, it took a couple of days. Today, it, it takes longer, but, uh, but eventually you see a very smart techniques to bypass things. Interesting. I, I like the, the way that the game, uh, the game analogy, that it's so, sort of uh, one, one move countered by another. Um, I wanted to also ask you, I mentioned in the past year, a company you were among the leadership team of, Lightspin, was was uh, acquired by Cisco. And I wonder what that, uh, the, the, the months that have transpired and going from a startup to a behemoth, uh, reflections on that journey and some of the differences, of course, in operating in one mode versus another. What, what are your reflections there, Gafneet? Well, for me, that's actually pretty funny because before joining Lightspin, I was only at corporates before that. And one of my fears before going to Lightspin was, how will I handle a startup? That's like the first time it it will be so different. What about, you know, stability? Maybe things will not work. But then my my passion to cloud and the security won and I I joined Lightspin and it, it was, it is a great company. And I'm I'm very glad about this move. And then when we were uh, told about the acquisition, I had the same thoughts again, but on the other side, how will I move back now to a big company? So I can say that at least for the Lightspin acquisition by Cisco, we are now part of Outshift, which is an innovation zone in Cisco. So I don't know how it feels to be as part of, of these uh, areas in terms of processes and how things work, but specifically here at Outshift, because it's an innovation zone and you have a, you have a lot of startups and they want to keep you as a startup, but not, uh, uh, not completely because they do want to make it better. It feels like you are a, a startup company because they left everything in terms of the organizational structure of the startup uh, with all the groups and everything. It feels like you are still a startup, but surrounded by a big family that supports you and, and lets you move on and evolve. And uh, also you, you can feel that the, the times and processes here are not that long versus maybe I would say other companies or, or corporates because they do want to be with the industry, with uh, uh, the fast and innovative things. So they, they do always uh, encourage innovation, new ideas. Let's try things, even if they will not work. But there is, there is a chance that they will be a breakthrough and we can add them as well to the product. You can see that now Lightspin can integrate with Cisco. It is, is, has a lot of security tools in networking and so on. So you, we integrate with them as well and giving a better value to the customer. So there are a lot of benefits to the location and, and the way we, we have entered to Cisco. Well, Gafnita Miga, thank you so much for sharing a bit about your remarkable experience and some of the areas that you're focused on, that you're excited about, and reflections upon the implications for uh, CIOs and, and security executives uh, everywhere. It's been a great conversation. Thank you.